One of the topics that in med medical school a lot of students struggle with is this topic of hypoxia versus hypoxemia. Well, um, I think I found a very good way to kind of address this issue and break these two things down in a way that's easy to understand. Um, so just to kind of begin, it's important to make the differentiation between what hypoxia is and what hypoxemia is. And I think for me, the best way to remember things, or the easiest way to remember things, is if you can look at the name and figure out what it means. So if you look here, right, hypoxia, it's easy to break it down like this. You know hypo means low, right? So hypo and hypo both mean low. Ox means oxygen. So you have ox, oxygen. So we know they're both low oxygen. Now the key difference really is this emia, right? Emia means blood, right? So look at for example, you might have anemia or emia. So when you have emia, I think blood. So then you know the distinction is here, right? So hypoxemia then is something to do with low oxygen in the blood. And so the way to think about it then is it's the low, a, a low partial pressure of oxygen in the blood, right? And hypoxia then is actually low O2 delivery to the actual tissues themselves. So this is an important distinction to make right off the bat. And I also wanted to highlight something that's really the physiology where, um, so hypoxemia, the low P, little a, A for arterial O2, is generally around 60, um, lower than 60 milligrams of mercury. And the reason why is physiology where, so you have, if you look at this graph between your partial pressure oxygen within your arteries, it, arterial partial pressure of oxygen and also hemoglobin saturation, you will see that with an increase in partial pressure, you have increase in hemoglobin saturation. But the body is able to compensate in a way that you can have a pretty large drop in partial pressure, but still maintain close to 100% saturation. However, once partial pressure falls below 60, you have a much sharper drop. So this is why um, talking about hypoxemia is typically low partial pressure is below 60 milligrams of mercury. All right, now the way to kind of break down the causes of hypoxia and hypoxemia, I think the best way to do it is to think about it um, stepwise in this manner, all right? So we're gonna start first with air. Where does oxygen come from? It comes from the air, okay? And so you breathe in the oxygen, you get something called inspired O2, right? And then that inspired oxygen goes to your lungs, right? And there you have something called the partial pressure, and the big A stands for alveolar oxygen. So partial pressure of alveolar um, oxygen. And so from there on, you can have the process of diffusion, right, where the oxygen diffuses from the lungs into the arteries, and you get the P little a for our, so arterial partial pressure of oxygen. And then from there, from arteries, um, oxygen can then get um, diffuse in, into the red blood cells and bind the hemoglobin, and that's where you get your saturated oxygen, right? So this is the amount of oxygen that's with saturated, this is the hemoglobin that's saturated with oxygen. So you get your sat oxygen. And then from there on, um, oxygen can go into your tissues, and that's this process called perfusion, right? So again, it's from air, inspired air, into your lungs, P, big AO2, diffusing into your arteries, P little a O2, binding the hemoglobin, SAO2, and perfusing to your tissues. And this is where kind of is important to understand the definition, right? Because for hypoxemia, the problem is you don't have enough, the partial pressure oxygen within your arteries are, are low, right? Whereas for hypoxia, it's actually decreased delivery to the tissues. Now this is important because as I break down the causes, Everything from here to here is going to, if there's anything wrong with this process here, around this area here, all the way up to here, you're going to get hypoxemia, right? If there's anything wrong with the process up, it's all the way up through here, that's where you get hypoxia. You see the hypoxia, the causes of hypoxia include the causes of hypoxemia. So if you draw it like this and you kind of understand that, Anything that causes hypoxemia will also cause hypoxia. And not everything that causes hypoxia will cause hypoxemia. Okay? So once you got this, now we can kind of go through to each individual causes. All right, so I went ahead and drew everything in. 
Um, and so we're going to actually start here with air going into the lungs, right? So this is the first place where things can kind of go wrong, right? And what, what kind of things can go wrong here? Well, the key one really is high altitude. It's not really something going wrong, but it's more of because you're at high altitude, the barometric pressure drops. And because the, bar the pressure drops, you actually have a decreased partial pressure of oxygen in the atmosphere itself. So therefore, with the air you breathe in, it's going to be at a decreased PO2, right? And so that's going to affect everything afterwards because you have less, if you want this way, less oxygen going into your lungs, you're going to have less getting into your blood and less going into your tissue. So that's kind of the first thing. After that, if you go on to the next step here, right, it's in the lungs, right? So what affects the air going into the lungs? What else can affect that? Well, what if you're hypoventilating? Right. What if you're not, you're breathing at a slower rate, right? Well, then because your ventilation rate decreases, you have less air going in, right? So less air going into your lungs. And again, less air going in means you can have a decreased P big AO2, which will then result in a decrease in P small AO2. And then you'll have, again, hypox hypoxemia and hypoxia, right? So remember, everything from this part all the way up to here is going to cause hypoxemia as well as hypoxia. All right, so now that we've discussed up to the lungs, what can affect the oxygen going from the lungs into the arteries? And so remember, we talked about this process itself is kind of diffusion, right? The gases diffuse across and equilibrates. Well, what affects that? Well, what if you had an increased diffusion distance, right? Increase diffusion. So what if, for example, you had thickening, right? Thickening of your, um, uh, of, of kind of the alveolar walls due to, for example, pulmonary fibrosis. Then what you have is you're going to have decreased oxygen getting through that thicker wall into your arteries, right? So you have something called an increased AA gradient, A for alveolar, and big A for alveolar, little A for arterial gradient in PaO2. And overall, your um, in your in your oxygen partial pressure oxygen overall your um, the partial pressure oxygen within your arteries are going to actually decrease because you can't get as much oxygen diffusing through. <coughs> so that is another cause of hypoxemia. And now, what's the, what kind of is the final really cause here that we we're talking to discuss today? And it's it's also affecting this part right here, right? The the process of getting air from lungs into arteries, and it's called VQ mismatch. Right, V stands for ventilation, Q stands for perfusion. And the way I like to think about VQ mismatch is simple. It's just ventilated alveoli, perfused pulmonary capillaries, and something's going wrong in between. Okay. Ventilated alveoli are not getting perfused, or perfused capillaries are not um, have no ventilated alveoli around them. And so there you have um, kind of a mismatch, right? So oxygen can't get into the capillaries because there is that mismatch. And the two kind of um, extremes of this are something called right to left shunt and dead space ventilation. So we'll start with right to left shunt. What does that mean? Right, that means that you're perfused but have no ventilation. So this is the case, right? If you have something blocking your airways, then you have your blood is flowing, flowing through, but you're not ventilated. No air is getting through. And because of that, you, you have a right to left shunt where your, arter your venous blood directly shunts back into your um into arterial blood so you, without being oxygenated and the example again is airway obstruction something blocking your airways another example might be a collapse of of your airways as well okay now dead space ventilation is the other extreme and this is when you have ventilated alveoli that is not perfused so if you look at the figure here is you have your your airways are clear ventilated but the problem is something is Either blocking your, I mean, it's kind of blo either blocking your um, your capillary, or um, your capillary is just it just is not being perfused through other uh, means as well. And so when you have that, you, your blood is not getting through. And so while this alveoli is ventilated, your blood is not getting through. So your blood can't be. Um, there's no gas exchange that can actually occur. And a good example is a pulmonary emboli. So the pulmonary embolism would get in and kind of knock out this pulmonary uh, capillary, then 
obviously no blood is going to get through to be ventilated. All right, so no gas exchange can occur. All right, so this is kind of um, BQ mismatch, and maybe good to actually just even write here um, gas exchange. Okay, so something affecting gas exchange. All right, so now we're up to here now, right? Well, now we're up to the our arterial partial pressure oxygen. So everything that we discussed up to now, because up to this point, right, affects intenita hypoxemia, right? Now everything past this point no longer causes hypoxemia, but it causes hypoxia, okay? And remember, everything before here also can cause hypoxia. So anything that causes hypoxemia can cause hypoxia, right? We're going to start with... Um, SaO2, right, saturation of oxygen, oxygen, saturated oxygen, which is reflecting the oxygen bound to hemoglobin, right? And we're going to start with the hemoglobin themselves, right? So if you obviously if you don't have enough hemoglobin, as in the case with anemia, then you can't get enough oxygen to read to the tissues, right? So decreased hemoglobin, decreased oxygen to read to the tissues. That's pretty straightforward. Now, what's another thing that can happen? Well, there are two more things that can affect this, actually. Right? What if you're you're you've inhaled carbon monoxide and you're and, and you so this carbon monoxide poisoning is like another cause. And the key about carbon monoxide is that it has a hundred times greater affinity for hemoglobin than oxygen. Right? So it binds the hemoglobin more readily and it stays bound. So because of that, you decrease the oxygen carrying capacity of hemoglobin. So hemoglobin can't carry as much oxygen. Because of that, you're going to have less oxygen to read to your tissues, causing hypoxia. All right. Another thing along the same lines is something called meth methemoglobinemia. It's a tough, it's a long term to remember, but basically what this is is you have increased oxidative stress in your body, right? And that's going to lead to oxidation of um, Fe2 to Fe3. And the key here is in this form, right? Hemoglobin doesn't bind oxygen. Okay, so when when the when the when the when iron is in Fe three plus form, it can't bind oxygen. So one way to remember this that I felt like I took this from Pathoma is Fe two binds O two, but I added something where Fe three tissues can't breathe, and so remember this, then you're never gonna forget that it's. Fe2 one that actually binds oxygen, and when it's oxidized Fe3, it doesn't bind. So when do you really kind of see this? Again, when you have increased oxidative stress, or um, in neonates where you don't quite have the machinery to kind of convert Fe3 back to Fe2, because your day-to-day -day life, you're going to have stress, right? So you're going to have Fe3, but you have the machinery to convert it back. In infants, in neonates, that machinery is not fully developed, so you might actually... Um, see this in infants as well, in neonates as well. All right, so now that we've talked about this step, it's time to go on to the next part, which is perfusion. So what is perfusion? It's the process of getting kind of this oxygen into the tissues, right? And so the perfusion, a key thing here is ischemia. And what is ischemia? It's basically it's decreased perfusion to the tissues, right? And so I took this also from Pathoma, and I think it's a very nice breakdown of the kind of the causes of ischemia where you have the arteries go into your or arterial blood go into your organs and your venous blood leaving the organs, right? And so you can have decreased arterial perfusion, which blocks here, preventing perfusion. You can have decreased venous drainage, which keeps this keeps the blood within the organ. Or you can have shock, which is generalized hypotension that also decreases perfusion to the tissues. And all three of these can lead to ischemia. When you have ischemia, because you have decreased perfusion, you have decreased oxygen to read to the tissues, right? Okay, and the final one I have here is what if there's an issue with the tissues themselves, right? And one of the examples, key examples, is actually cyanide poisoning. So this is actually an uncoupler of oxidative phosphorylation, right? Ox uncoupler of oxidative phosphorylation. What that means is you're gonna have a decreased oxygen utilization by the tissues. So because your tissues can't use Oxygen as well, they're going to it's going to be decreased delivery of oxygen to tissues causing hypoxia. So again, looking at the big picture, it's just important to remember kind of this step by step process, 
I think it's helpful to see it, out, see kind of everything drawn out and realize that everything before this point will cause hypoxemia and everything after this point will cause hypoxemia, uh, will cause hypoxia. And all the, the fact causes of hypoxemia can also cause hypoxia. And knowing every step of this way, every step of this kind of this pathway will help you understand everything that can go wrong as well as examples of things that can go wrong. You know, as I help, hope this video helped under, um, help you guys understand this topic. You know, it's not a difficult topic at all once you break it down. I think once you go through and kind of draw this out yourself, you're going to get master this material um, and understand it to the point where you can answer any question regarding hypoxia and hypoxemia.